So let's get started. Um, welcome to this session about uh, Tattletale. Uh, my name is uh, Jesper Peterson. I'm the uh, project lead uh, for Tattletale. So in this session, we're going to uh, do two things, basically. Take a look at what Tattletale actually is and how it relates to JBoss Application Server 7. So we'll go through, basically give you an idea of what Tattletale actually is, and we'll look at how that relates to your deployments, which are the enterprise archives. Um, we'll take a look at uh, AS7 and how um, you can use Tattletale in order to, to get up and running uh, more quickly on AS7 and putting it all together, and then finally some roadmap issues. Um, so Tattletale is basically a software quality tool in, in basically in that category. So it tries to solve a number of problems. So you could have Java archives, so jar files, um, and you only have the binaries. So you don't ha really have a sense of how they relate to each other, whether they're used or not. Um, you need to know where a class is basically located within all this basic mess of jar files. And is the dependency graph, which basically is, is all the classes that are needed, really available to the application itself? Um, it could be something like, uh, basic information about each archive, like version identifiers, uh, OSGI status. Um, it could be something like, this API is now illegal to use, so you need to flag all the artifacts that is currently using that uh, API in order to port them over to, to the new and correct way. And jar hell, right? So each box here is a jar file, and each line is a dependency. So you could be faced with something mammoth of a task to figure out how they relate to each other. Um, this is actually from an example. Um, you'll have to figure out which application server it's actually, this is from, and it's not ours. So, uh, so we have some goals for Tattletale now. Um, we should uh, have a tool that uh, basically helps identify these dependencies. Um, when you have, uh, tools like Maven, you actually specify it in the POM files, but that's build time information, so that's basically gone. Uh, you have to open up archives and, to figure it out. Um, you also want to be able, uh, basically uh, see which are the standard APIs that I'm actually depending on. Uh, um, am I using EE6, uh, the EE6 APIs in my application, or the application that you're currently looking at. So we need basically the tool to um, get an overview of each of the archives. So which are the classes that it, this archive is providing, but with, more importantly also, which uh, are the classes that it actually needs in order to function probably. And yeah, help locate uh, class information and the metadata around those archives. Using all this information, we can basically generate reports um, that you could look at and hopefully by doing that help improve your, uh, the software quality of your project. Um, basically, you could use it to split up APIs and implementation details so it's not one big bundle that has public classes in, in all of it. So, so uh, the end users basically use all the public classes but those are really an implementation detail. Um, uh, like I said, uh, remove blacklisted APIs um, instead of uh, depending on implementation details of an application server, you actually uh, use the Java EE6 API instead to, to find the right classes. And you may not have access to the code. So you are stuck with porting, getting some application up and running and all you have is, is, is the bundle itself. So, Tattletale is basically a command line tool. So you invoke it uh, from the command line with a source uh, directory and a target where the uh, um, reports will be generated. And um, 
Tattletale used a Java Assist, uh, which is a bytecode tool library to do all its uh, class scanning. Um, there's integration with Ant and Maven, so you could generate these uh, reports as part of, of um, your build, and you can actually even fail your build if certain reports are being flagged as, as an error. So it's basically split in to different parts of Tattletale. So the first part is the analyzing phase, where we open up the archive, we extract the information that we need from it, and then we start to record the dependencies uh, from a class level all the way up to an archive level. Um, when, once we have those dependencies, we can resolve those dependencies um, as being correct against standard APIs like JDK 5 and 6 and Java EE 5 and 6 and Seam and CDI and what, well, what kind of profiles that you, you choose to uh, implement. Um, and then you can basically filter on the report. So if you know a certain criteria is correct that's being flagged as, as a warning or something or an error, you can filter that out so it, it won't fail the, uh, your build. So the reports are, is basically the, the data that, that you're looking at at the end, right? So, and those are in, in different kinds of uh, categories. So we have one that's uh, dependencies. So that has everything to do with how the dependencies between the classes, the packages, the archives, and stuff like that in them. Um, there's a general category, uh, which are more of general use, uh, just basic information about uh, the archive itself. And then there's the archive report, which is basically the, the low-level data that we're actually collecting. And these reports uh, have various severities. So it could be an info report. An info report could be like, where is this class located? It has no meaning to, to have a warning on it, which is basically something that you should fix. And then there's the error reports, which are basically, if this report is being uh, flagged, you need to fix, fix this error. So each uh, report can have a status. It could be green, everything is okay. Yellow, yeah, you need to look at this. And then red, if it's actually, it's, it had found a serious error. So um, inside of Tattletale, we have uh, some abstract classes. So it's basically easy to write your own ones, uh, your own reports, uh, and uh, basically integrate those in the Tattletale build. So we have a cu uh, the custom reports functionality where you can specify all your reports so you can implement your own stuff. Um, and currently, uh, we just um, output uh, the reports in HTML. So dependencies, basically from class to archive level. And then we have the graphical dependencies because sometimes it's easier to document stuff with a picture instead of uh, just text files. And then um, we have uh, the transitive ones. So basically, it goes through and lists the entire uh, tree of dependencies for each of the archives. So you can actually see how, how many artifacts is actually being pulled in at the end uh, by a single artifact. Um, and then we have circular dependencies. And circular dependencies are extremely bad, right? So uh, it could be a just simple two archives that are pointing towards each other, but it could also be like a big cloud of, of, of uh, archives. So but it's the end result is the same. It's, uh, it's something that should be uh, eliminated. So the, the general reports are more of a uh, nature where um, it's information to the end developer. Uh, so simple stuff like a class location, OSGI, metadata. Um, if, a, if an archive is, is sealed or, and signed, so it has security information in and uh, if you have multiple versions of the same Java file um, with different version numbers and stuff like that, uh, that's not too bad. Um, something we should get rid of. Then there is um, uh, version numbers that are not 
uh, correct. So contains uh, incorrect um, characters and stuff like that, or it's even missing. Um, the uh, multiple jars and multiple locations are basically if you have the same class or the same package in, uh, in multiple jar files, um, something is wrong because then you can't uh, seal and sign these archives. Or it could be that you have the same class in two different archives. So you need to be <laughs> make sure that uh, you don't know which one is being used, right? Which one is being picked up. Since we basically can scan and look for class usage, uh, we can actually figure out if, if a jar file doesn't have any reference to it. So it could, uh, it could maybe be uh, eliminated from your build environment. Um, of, right now, Tattletail doesn't support uh, dynamic class loading, so it's only a static analysis. So you could have like a uh, dynamic string being created during the runtime, and, and then that creates a dependency to the unused class. So you have to be a bit careful and know a bit more about um, how uh, the uh, application actually works. Of course, uh, blacklisted API, which lists the, uh, the uh, classes where um, the blacklisted API is, is being used. And then new to uh, Tattletail 1.2 is the uh, JBoss AS7 report, which we'll dive into. So currently, uh, Tattletail supports jar files and wars and ears. So let's take a look at that. So ears and, and wars are basically your applications. So um, it's basically just another representation, right? It's, it's a, if you have a, like a server, like the JBoss application server, um, those are all jar files. So that's one way of looking at it. We have, that's our way, right? Um, but for you, it's, it's the application level. But the same reports sort of make sense for, for, uh, for your applications. You might want to trim down uh, your ear file. You might need to uh, remove uh, unneeded jar files from your ears to make your application so, uh, smaller. You want to uh, simplify your usage. You want to split up uh, your application into API and, and implementation and stuff like that. So it's, the same reports actually make sense for you. Um, of course, since you're using an, uh, an ear on a war, you need to be remember to actually enable the profile that you're coding against. So that could be E5 or 6. So how does all this relate to AS7? So AS7 is a completely new redesigned application server. Um, it's basically started out with a completely new kernel, a completely new way of, of thinking about how to build up services, how to do class loading, how to uh, create internal services, how to integrate um, other projects in, into subsystems. So um, AS7 is uh, extremely quick to, to boot, so you can actually use it for unit testing now. Um, you have the ability to use JBoss modules to create a complete and module of, um, graph of dependencies between your artifacts and libraries. Um, we have a unified uh, management model now also. So there is a single way to get in. So we have a command line tool to interact with the management model. We have a web console. We have an open API that you can use. And so completely a complete rewrite from, from earlier versions. So since we are now um, have a very strict uh, class loading hierarchy, we need to be able to specify dependencies for each of these modules. So um, in this case, 
we're going to create a com acme uh, common module, which will contain uh, libraries. And we can create that in the main slot, as it's called, which basically, if a slot is not specified, it, that is the module that's being used. But we can also create other directories under there that has a specific slot name. Then we'll copy the resources, so the API or whatever to, to, uh, to that module. And then we'll create a module's XML file, which describes this module and its dependencies. So if we look at how a module XML file will look, we'll see that the common module actually consists of a lib1 jar and a lib2 jar. And these two jars are having a dependencies on the Java X API and the Java X transaction API. So now we have a unit that we can reference, and those will expose the the libs, the public classes in lib1 and lib2. And that module in the, is then linked to, to the, the two modules described here. So now you have a, a module which has the APIs exposed that you want to have, uh, have exposed. So you basically have to use your application or tell it to link and use that module. So inside the manifest file, you'll then just, just say dependencies colon and then the name of the module. So now you have basically told the ear file that it needs to take its class loader and link it towards that module. You can also use a JBoss deployment structure XML file, uh, which basically does the, the same thing, but it's it's uh, a bit more a bit more features there, and, and it's better described. So either way. So putting it all together. Basically, I'm going to take a look at the kitchen, kitchen sink year that we have in our quick starts. So here we'll oh, let's give it some memory. So we'll take Tattletail and execute it towards uh, JBoss AS kitchen sink, and then kitchen sink as the output directory. Uh, let's see what happened here. That's not good. So now we have a directory, which basically has all the reports and then an index file. Let's see, can we bring that up a bit? So down here, we now have the year report for the archive which has the basic information here. And we can see that there is two sub-archives inside this air file. We have a war file, um, which has requirements like Java util lists. 
and then it has um, class files of its own in here. And we have the jar file, same deal basically, which has provides and, and requires. So that's the overall information. Then uh, we can go in and we can see that the kitchen sink ear is uh, requiring some classes. So this is uh, rest which wasn't found, and there's uh, some validator from Hibernate that wasn't found. And then there are a couple of, of uh, classes here. That, th those are probably uh, incorrect, but. So now we can go and see the AS7 report. Go in and open up the structure file. So here you can see the, uh, the modules names that Tattletale has found inside of AS7 that is required for this application. Um, so you can see that it's using annotations, it's using EJBs, it's, uh, it's apparently faces based, it's using JPA, it's using bean validation, REST EC, XML, and hibernate, and then of course the system files itself. So this is basically the structure file that now you can embed, and this will then link up your ear file to, to those modules. Um, it's something that, that you will look at and see if there is something that, that pops out here. So the only one that really pops out here is, is the hibernate one. Uh, because the uh, deployment, once it gets deployed into AS7, will automatically attach the, uh, the EE API as, as a dependency to the uh, to file here. But as we saw, there was uh, an explicit import of, of uh, Hibernate validator that is uh, outside of the spec. So uh, that's why the uh, Hibernate validator module is, is needed as an explicit dependency. So, uh, let's see what else. So, um, beta two, which is released right now, has some of these reports implemented you, uh, with functionality for ES and WAR files, but there are, there are reports that are not completely implemented yet. And that's why we're still at beta. Um, so, uh, but we'll get back to that. Oh, let's see, where is it? So if we look at the, the roadmap, um, of course we want to cover all the enterprise archives. Now we only have years and wars, and some of those are not even, um, completely supported yet because some of the reports are missing support for them. Um, so we want to call all the uh, 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 standard defines uh, archive formats, but it could also be uh, JBoss specific ones too or, or from other vendors, so like uh, our service archive, our SAR archive. Um, right now, since we're, we're only uh, outputting HTML and that's, okay in, in certain cases, but it would, be, it would be really good to actually do an XML-based format instead so you can transform uh, all the reports into PDF files or whatever you want to, to output. So that's, that's a big uh, thing. Um, since this is a qual uh, software quality tool, um, Jenkins support is, of course, important. Um, so you have it uh, as part of your build. So the initial release of the Jenkins plugin is, is out now. Um, and uh, Vaslak is, is, is uh, leading uh, that effort. Um, and it basically uh, takes the uh, Tattletale reports and exposes them directly in Jenkins. So since we have 
a framework for great, uh, generating um, custom reports, um, some guys inside of JBoss took this idea and created JBoss Cake. And JBoss Cake is basically developed by our uh, consulting part of, of the company. And it basically uh, are reports that helps migrate between uh, versions of JBoss or from another vendor to JBoss. Um, so it could be something like, I know they have a report where they go in and they uh, blacklist all uh, direct imports of classes from other vendors like Com, um, Oracle, and, and stuff like that. And those will actually uh, be shown in, in the reports instead. Um, and actually with source code, uh, decompile source code, so you can actually see the locations. And they also have custom reports uh, for uh, vendor-specific uh, stuff, and those are being scanned for Java files and JSPs and stuff like that. And they are, uh, also actually include uh, reports about the deployment metadata, which actually, so it could be uh, WebLogic EJB XML file, which specifies the Gini locations and stuff like that for, for EJBs. So they actually enhanced Tattletale uh, to go in and, uh, and include the deployment metadata too, so they could use it in the reports. So um, as I said, the latest version is, is beta 2. And um, you can get it at the, 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 uh, our homepage, of course. And we have some documentation that describes all the reports. And um, basically, it would be a good opportunity to uh, go in and get involved in Tattletale development uh, by creating new reports that you find interesting, uh, create support for, the new, uh, for new enterprise archive types, and, and um, basically help uh, enhance the support of, uh, of the existing reports so they function with all the different archive types. So, the, uh, the project is hosted on my GitHub account currently in a Git, so it should be very simple to, to get started with, to write some code. And then there is, on the Jenkins website, there is a complete description of, of the Jenkins plugin. So, I think. Are there any questions? Um, are there any specific reports uh, within Telltale that would help with the new way of you know, cloud cloning and JBoss covers? Yeah, so that was, uh, well, um, uh, let's see, where was it? Here. So this is basically. The AS7 report is basically a report where it uses a profile that we have defined as AS7. So it knows the module name of each of the classes. Um, but that report is being generated by a tool inside of, of, uh, of uh, Tattletale. So if what you would do is you would create your module that has the, the libraries that you want to define as a company-wide one, then you will run that tool on your distribution, and then your module will be picked up too. And then you could implement a report that would uh, either flag your module as usage, or you could uh, see the uh, deployment structure file again. Um, where was it? Oh, maybe it's gone. So automatically, the, the, uh, the, uh, your module will, will show up in this list. So that's probably the easiest ways to do it. Any other questions?
Yeah, so uh, for each of the reports that are included, um, we have a filter functionality. So in the user guide, under the circular dependency report, you will find how uh, the filter expression is, is going to look. Um, so you can filter out that warning if you want to. When you implement support for it. <laughs> no, it's, it, uh, no, um, Tattletale is something that I uh, spend time on when I have time for it. So it's, it's a community-based project. So what the community wants to do with it, it's, uh, it's a good way to get involved with it and implement support for, for the ESB files. So for, for me, as, as a JCA lead, in, in, in JBoss, the next one will probably be resource adapters, right? So. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Um, so inside the uh, distribution, there is a template This way. Uh, so, a default properties file, and all these properties you can also specify for the AND and Maven tasks. So, the first one is, is class loader, which basically is a way to tell Tattletail how class loading is done. Um, from a static point of view. So there's plugins for a AS4 uh, and 5 and 6, which basically resolve or knows about class loading structures based on the directory structure that we have in the old days, like <laughs> lib, common lib, and, and the server configuration lib directory. So, and then there are the profiles. So we can see here the kitchen sink that I ran had uh, Java 5 and 6 and EE6 enabled. Um, so what the profile actually does is it basically, once it finds the dependency that is in that profile, it'll basically check mark it. Okay, this is resolved because it's going to be resolved by the server itself. And then you have a list of uh, reports. So instead of having all the reports output it, you can just put in as, uh, the ones that you are really interested in. Uh, archives that should be excluded, blacklisted APIs, uh, which file that should be scanned, and then um, the dot. So that's for graphical dependencies. So we output actually uh, what's called a dot file, and that dot file then gets um, invoked using graphvis and that generates the uh, PNG. So. so it's either from the command line or, or through the and and maven task. It's not available as yet, but there are, I think there are plans of, of open sourcing it and, and getting it out. Uh, there are some, some issues around because it's currently decompiling code and in it's highlighting uh, vendor-specific stuff. Uh, so my guess is we'll see the core functionality uh, being open sourced, uh, hopefully very soon, and uh, and having the more vendor-specific parts being being private. Uh, but once you have the the uh, open source part, it should be relatively easy to, for you to, to write your own custom reports on top of that. So um, JBoss Consulting is, is basically contributing uh, a lot of their patches uh, back to Tattletail. So in order to keep a, a simple and unified platform as possible. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, 
you, you, could, you could do it two ways. You could either create your own custom profile, um, which basically lists your classes and which ones are allowed and disallowed, and then have the blacklisted API filter out the rest. So uh, let's see, we can actually. No, I won't. Yeah. Let's take it afterwards if, if you want to see an example. I think that's it, then.